Cool, mate, this week's tutorial is a beard fade and shape up on Lewis. We're going straight in, no kissing. To start, we're using our one and a half guard against the grain on the sideburn to reduce the bulk below his longer hair. We're then flipping our clippers upside down to catch any strays that are trying to escape the wrath of my clipper. We'll then debolt the rest of the hair below the temple, making sure to stop around the bottom of the ear. Throughout this tutorial, you'll notice I'll use feature points such as the ear to place my guides. This is so that we stay balanced and symmetrical. Whip your trimmers out and place your trimmer guide at the first crease of the ear and just above the second. Debulk this area and then move on to your clipper work. Open your fade lever all the way and place the guide roughly a finger's width from the top and the bottom. Gradually close your fade lever to remove the lines. Personally, the method I like to use is as follows. Fade lever all the way open, then fade lever closed and open by one click. Use the corner of the blade to pick out the dark spots, then open your lever by an extra click to refine. If you're wondering what the hell I'm waffling about, most clippers these days come with click levers so that you can easily work out where you're at. If you haven't got one and you're interested, head down to the description where you can find an exclusive discount link just for my subscribers on all barber tools from barberblades.co.uk. If there's still a line between the open fade lever and the one and a half, then grab hold of your half guard and chuck her on the clipper. First, use it with an open lever and gradually close it to remove the shadows that might be left. That should complete the fade for the temple. We're now moving on to the general beard bulk. Grab your grade two, open your fade lever and go a finger's width into the depths of the beard. Following that, you'll close the fade lever and move up half a finger's width to soften the transition. Take your one guard and open your lever, soften the last remaining shadow into the fade. If you need to, close the lever until the line fades itself out. Moving down again, grab your three guard and with an open lever, go another finger's width down. Debolt the area and then move up to a closed lever another half finger's width. Refine the line by using your grade two to soften the last remaining shadow. You may find that hairs stick up against the normal growth. If so, flip the clippers upside down and gently remove the stray hairs. So that's the fade boshed out, let's give Lewis a naughty lineup. We're starting off at the temple and creating a proper cheeky little C cup. It's important to stay as close to the natural line as possible. Although we do want a nice sharp line, so go far enough in so that you can visually see an exaggerated arch. The shape up is hugely important part of this haircut and this will give the fade some depth and contrast. First, we're creating a horizontal bar at the top of the arch. Following that, we're creating a vertical bar at the sideburn. For the middle, the C-cup, we'll use a pivot technique to create a C-motion with our clipper. Using the right-hand corner of our clipper, we're softly connecting the two lines together with an arc. Clean up the rest of the hairline at the temple and around the ear, and then mirror the same technique for the other side. For the vertical bar just below the ear, we're combing the hair growth out to the line and creating a sharp line ready to connect the jaw. When combing the hair out to the edges, it's important not to comb the hair too far out from its natural line. This is because the hair naturally sits down and not out to the side, so that when the hair falls in its natural state, you'll have too much of a graduated line because of overdirection. This results in a visibly lighter appearance at the back of the shape up and creates a weak line. The aim of the game is not to comb the hair too far out from its natural fall before lining up. For the cheeks, we want to aim for a nice high line. We'll use feature points and beard density to determine our lines. If the beard is strong enough, we'll use the corner of the tash for our shape up. If not, we'll head down to the next guide, which will be the corner of the lip. Take the line from the corner of the lip and create a slight arc into the temple area. Make sure not to overly exaggerate this line as you'll get lots of regrowth in about two or three days. Mirror this for both sides, stand square on with your client and check the symmetry and balance. As the fade and line up locked in, we're now gonna chuck some product through the beard, wet it up, ready for a quick blow. I like to use a water soluble product like Uppercut Deluxe Pomade. This product has treacle like texture and dries really well into the beard. Not to mention, it smells so good you wanna eat it. Take a finger's width worth of pomade, Warm it through the palm of your hands until it's almost invisible and evenly distribute it throughout the beard. Wet your hands and run them through the beard, making sure the beard is nice and damp. The product and water through the beard will help us in expanding the shape with our blow dry, 
ready to sculpt the beard with clipper over comb. Grab your dryer, place it on a low speed, medium heat setting, and using a round brush, grip the hair from underneath the chin and work up. Curl the beard in the opposing direction, straightening the curl. Take your clipper comb, make sure your clipper is set to zero, and starting at the middle of the chin, create your first horizontal guide. As this is a square shape, we're placing our comb underneath the beard, scooping out until the comb is flat horizontally, and then removing the bulk. As we approach the sides of the beard, we're following in similar fashion, remaining straight and horizontal to retain their squareness. This means that technically the size of the beard will be the longer areas, whereas the chin will become the shortest. When placing your comb at the size of the beard, you'll find the shortest point at the middle of the shape. This short point is the guide you'll use throughout the beard trim. Mirror this for both sides of the beard before moving on to the freehand shape. Clipper over comb has given us a good rough shape of how we want the beard to look. It's now time to refine it with a bit of freehand. Ideally, you'll want to be using a fade blade for this type of freehand, as it has a super flat edge and helps to retain steadiness on the square shape. You should keep in mind that if you're working on a client, you need to make sure that your cutting blade is not overlapping the guide blade. It's an easy mistake to make. Where us barbers zero gap our clippers for sharp fades, we often forget that angling the clipper towards the skin can create irritation. If your clippers are sharp, click your fade lever back one notch so that your blade is slightly less prominent. This will make sure that your client's safe while still getting a sharp line. Follow the same shape we've created with clipper over comb. The freehand shape is just to refine and sharpen our work. Moving on to the upper part of the shape, we're reducing volume and bulk around the facial shape. Working with the grain on a grade two will help flatten the shape, giving the face a slimmer, more elongated shape. Grab your grade two and with a closed lever, work lightly against the cheeks, following the grain of the hair. For visibility, it's good practice to stand behind the client so that you can see the vertical shape that you're creating. If you find that the grade two is not hitting quite as hard as you want it to, switch it up for grade one with an open lever and repeat the same process. Mirror this for both sides and the chin and then check your shape. You may find at this point that you want to go back to your refinement stage to get the beard back into a sharp shape again. Moving on to the moustache then, with Lewis's beard we've decided to reduce the bulk quite a lot. Lewis has a really straight and thick beard that sticks out when it's longer. He prefers to keep it short and tight to make life easier. When lining the lip, you'll want to expose the skin slightly to create a nice clean finish. Some clients with a longer tash may wish to expose less of the lip, in which case you would reduce the bulk and line the lip where it naturally sits. Back to refinement, much like we did with the grade two, going against the grain, we're taking our clipper, opening the lever and working against the grain, but this time hovering above the growth. The aim of the game is to reduce the volume on the cheeks. This is everything that sticks out from the shape. That's the majority of the beard now complete. We're drilling in the last details before finishing up. Following the shape you've already created with the clippers, take your trimmers and go over the details. Line up the rest of the beard, making sure that all lines are lined nice and sharp. Take your scissors, much like we did with the clippers, and cut any of the hairs that stick out from the shape. At this stage, you can take an afro comb to pick out the shape. This will help to see anything that protrudes the square shape. Simultaneously, comb out and cut hair. You'll continuously find hairs that stick out the more you comb. So just get to a stage where you've done the best you can. The beard is never gonna look perfect. The nature of a longer beard is to look rugged. Grab yourself a hot towel. This will help relax the client, soften the hair and open the pores. This is an important part of the process before using your cutthroat as it will reduce irritation and it becomes a lot easier to remove the hair. I like to use talc to line out my clients. I use this instead of a pre-shave. Much like the pre-shave, it creates a barrier between the skin and blade, helping to reduce friction and it gives a nice glide. The reason for the talc is that it acts as a dry stencil, giving maximum visibility when blading. It creates a crisp white line that you can easily check in the mirror for balance. You'll find that pre-shave will make the hair stick together and you can end up removing hair that doesn't really need to be removed. Grab your blade and blade into the hairline. Pull the skin taut, angle your blade at 30 degrees and shave against the grain into the shape up. 
As you move further down towards the mastoid and cheekbone, make sure to pull the skin right up to create a nice curve. Remember to use the line you've already made with your trimmers to stay as natural as possible to prevent any unwanted regrowth. At the end of the beard trim, I like to hold the beard in place with a bit of hairspray. This will keep all the split ends down and reduce any volume from springing up. Lewis has gone from butters to painting in around 10 minutes. Imagine what we could do with more time. Fitty. Be sure to check out the beard playlist for more beard trim tutorials or check out the haircut playlist on all things fades and scissor work. I'm CMC Barwa. Thanks for spending your time with me. I've enjoyed every second of it. Laters.